Welcome to part three of lecture 16 of aerospace propulsion. Um, we left off with this question of trying to construct the uh, rotor exit velocity triangles for a generic turbine. So we do this conceptually in exactly the same way, except that now the thing that we know that we're starting with is the uh, relative velocity as opposed to the, tangent the absolute velocity. So we have our relative velocity, relative plus frame equals absolute. So we are able to construct our vector triangle, and we can see from this uh, that in general the, the tangential velocity um, is going to be, as you say, 3 minus u. Uh, and we can get the angles the same way. So here, um, alpha 3 rel is negative, whereas alpha 3 is positive. And note that the absolute tangential velocity is decreasing through the rotor for a turbine. That must be the case, or else it isn't a turbine. Up to now, we've assumed that the blade speed u is constant across the rotor, and this means that we're assuming that there's no radial streamline shift. Um, if that's the case, then the relative stagnation of enthalpy is constant across the rotor. Um, so the relative stagnation enthalpy is just the construction of a stagnation enthalpy based on the relative velocity. And because in the reference frame of the rotor there's no work exchange happening, um, this quantity is constant unless there's a radius shift. We can quantify the change in absolute, uh, in absolute stagnation enthalpy um, across the rotor by looking at the change in uh, absolute velocities. And we can actually write this using either uh, v theta 2 minus v theta 3 or v theta 3 rel minus v theta 2 rel uh, and it's going to give us the same difference because the difference here um, you know, all of these are, are going between absolute and relative there's just a constant factor of u that we're adding um, or subtracting from both terms so it cancels out. Keep in mind, um, remember that the tangential velocities are positive if they're in the same direction as the blade speed so then um, if we assume our axial velocity is constant, we could pull that out and say that delta H naught is u times vx um, times either tan alpha 2 minus tan alpha 3 or tan alpha 3 rel minus tan alpha 2 rel. Um, for a rotor, right, the uh, relative angles are often the ones that are easier to know. Now in a turbine, losses function to increase the pressure drop. Right, the work exchange is, is essentially independent of the losses. Um, so in the stators, losses um, cause the stagnation pressure to decrease. Um, right, it would be constant if it was lossless. And in rotors, the, stagnation, the absolute stagnation pre pressure drop is more than it would be due to the work extraction alone due to the presence of losses. Um, typically, this would be something like 3 to 6 percent of the exit dynamic pressure for each blade row. To keep the losses low, we need to keep uh, our work and full coefficients in the ranges suggested by the Smith chart earlier. So based on performance requirements, we could now figure out our flow angles through a machine. But the big thing that we haven't been able to, fi we won't have been able to figure out yet is how many blades should be in a given blade row. Before we get into formal criteria to help us do that, I'd like you to think about different reasons of what would be the advantage of having a small number of turbine blades versus the, um, why you would, might want to have a large number of turbine blades. So try to come up with some ideas for this before you move on to the next part of the video and we'll also take this up during the tutorial.